<laughs> awesome. So, hi everybody, I'm Josh. I'm your final speaker today. Cheer for that, maybe. It's exciting, we made it. Um, in, in all seriousness, it's, it's an honor to be back. This is my third switch point uh, in a row. I hope to make fourth next year. Um, I'm a, a proud board member here at IntraHealth, and uh, I run a nonprofit technology company called Medic Mobile. Uh, and Medic is a pretty weird tech company in that we exist uh, in order to improve global health equity. Um, that's our sole purpose, and we uh, founded as a nonprofit to free us up to design alongside and for users uh, working in challenging environments, specifically. Uh, last mile community health workers. Um, that's my normal topic uh, of discussion, um, but I've actually talked about that with most of you in this room, and IntraHealth asked me and SwitchPoint asked me if I would talk about tech for good. Um, I think they brought me in as an optimist for the end of the day. Um, I'll be honest, I, I view myself as a grounded optimist, certainly not uh, a techno utopian. Um, I'm also not a futurist. So for me, I had to go back to the start of this. And I also want to say uh, this is about uh, tech for purpose, not for permanence. I'm going to say for good. Um, this is about uh, purposeful application of tech. Um, we can talk about sustainability and permanence later. Um, this was the question I started with when I thought about this 10-minute conversation and this setup. Um, and I'm actually going to call a couple of you out. Do, does anyone have their favorite definition of technology? I'm not moving on until someone says something. Yeah. Uh, technology is magic that we just don't understand yet. <laughs> Love it. Any, any more? It's hard to beat. Uh, humanity's ability to manipulate their environment. Awesome. Any others people want to share? Ways of doing things. <laughs> Love it. Those are all great. Um, I did some Googling, like I always do, found a great blog in 2007 by Kevin Kelly. Um, this is his blog, felt I should plug it. And on this blog, found some, some interesting quotes. So Alan Kay said, Te technology is anything you, that was invented after you were born. Um, Danny Hill said, technology is everything that doesn't work yet. And I'm gonna go forward and backward just to make it, sure I get his name right, hopefully. Uh-oh. This is awesome. Technology is everything that doesn't work yet. <laughs> it's amazing. So let's go forward two slides. And Douglas Adams, and I'll go back. Douglas Adams said, I'll get, try to get this right. Technology, uh, things that were invented before you were born is just stuff. Everything invented from when you were born to when you're 30 is th the most amazing thing of all time, and you might be able to build a career off of it, which sounds good to me. And then everything invented after you were 30 uh, is probably going to lead to the downfall of civilization <laughs> un until everything's okay, really, in the end. So that's, that's his definition. And then I'll actually, uh, I'll let you read this because it's, it's I think, quite relevant. And then Kevin ended this post by saying successful in inventions disappear from our awareness. Um, and I, I certainly feel that way. Um, and at Medic, we focus on building mobile and web tools for health workers and patients. We help people communicate to solve problems uh, and to accomplish goals in health systems. And um, I wanted to give you a sense of who we are and our priorities, the, the ways that we're sort of yanking and bending technology uh, to do specific things. So we help people coordinate childhood immunization campaigns, um, across about a dozen countries. We help with uh, tracking disease outbreaks faster, um, coordinating with remote health workers. We help with stock monitoring for essential commodities. Uh, we help with coordinating maternal and child health, um, specifically giving more people access to safe, safe uh, births. And we've learned a couple of things. So there are three ways uh, I'll sort of briefly describe how we uh, harness tech and turn it into tech for good. Um, this is the best structure that I could come up with. 
looking back after four years of work in this field. The first thing we do is we leverage infrastructure that's there. Um, tech that is already embedded, that you sort of look up and you notice this is everywhere, we need to harness the ubiquity. And the best example by far is cell phone coverage. Um, and I want to go back to the chair quote because you know, we don't walk into a room like this today and like freak out because there are so many chairs around and we can sit in them and they're really practical. Um, we're freaking out about cell phone coverage right now because it's new. At some point it will just be ubiquitous and just like if you were trapped in a box and there was a chair there, you would go get the chair, put it up against the box and like climb out and use it as a tool. Um, we're gonna use cell phone coverage in that same way. It'll be this really hyper-intuitive tool that surrounds us and we can use. Um, chairs are great technologies. Next thing we do is we, we repurpose and we sort of take something that exists, um, someone, some designer somewhere that designed it for something and we focus it on a global health challenge. Um, my favorite example of this uh, was repurposing these little microcontrollers, these small computers called Parallel Sims. And these were originally created to jailbreak iPhones in the US. And it turns out you can use them to run your app on any phone on the planet. And so we run medics apps for community health workers on $10 phones using the same technology. Literally, there have been no other purchasers of this technology except for like 17-year-old American kids in 2007 jailbreaking their iPhones and the medic equipping community health workers. <laughs> so it's like a true repurposing. Um, and one of, my, one of my favorite stories of that. Um, another way to think about this is a focusing um, for a sole purpose, and this is borrowed from Riders for Health, who was here at Switchpoint. Um, you know, motorcycles have been around for a really long time and they said we're going to focus on this and we're going to build out the maintenance structure around this technology. We're really going to put it to work for health systems to improve health outcomes. And the last thing we can do, and this is relatively new, is and pharma and biotech have been doing this for a long time, we can actually decide what needs to be built for that community health worker and then we build it. And this is what we raise uh, philanthropic capital for at Medic and what a lot of NGOs raise R&D funds for. Um, it's really designing for people who wouldn't be designed for and alongside uh, without, without you. Technology tools are, uh, sorry, software technology tools are a great example of this. It's also really exciting because we now have tools that build tools. So I don't code, but I can build a web app pretty quickly. So it's an exciting time to be a builder I see a lot of builders in the room, um, whether you knew it or not. Um, but it doesn't have to be software. So our designer and our design team built a, a deck of cards that we call our sketch cards. This is them working with a, a community in Kenya um, to basically storytell with these cards and build out a new system map about how a workflow is going to go. Um, and we view this as technology and as a technology tool as well. So in the last two minutes, uh, I want to propose that these questions are being asked in boardrooms of technology companies all day, every day, um, just in lots of places. Um, what could we build? What should we build? What should it do? What's a good use? And people are just answering these questions. It's people at these companies answering these questions. And I think that this room needs to be weighing in a lot more. So my challenge to you all is that um, we get off the sidelines as a global health community and that we start answering these questions along with um, these bigger companies and smaller ones and the more innovative ones. And so that when you log into New York Times and you see this headline that Facebook is building out a drone lab um, or you go to Google Glass, check out their consumer elect electronics, um, or you hear about Planet Labs. I heard about them last week for the first time. They just launched 30 mini satellites. They're sent, they call them doves. They're circling the planet once every day. We get a photo of every spot on planet Earth with three, me three meter resolution. It's totally crazy. Google Earth um, gives us a year lag time right now. So every day we'll have a, spot of it, we'll have a photo of every spot on Earth. Um, terrifying, but also um, there's a lot of potential. And if this room doesn't shape those use cases, uh, I'm not sure who will and who will do it right. So it's really a call to action. Um, they stood up on stage in the UK last week and asked for use cases from, uh, from a health perspective. So here's 
uh, the general framework. So if we broaden our definition of technology, so you don't have to be coding to be working in tech. I think you are all working in technology. I love the definitions we heard. If you look at the three ways you can bend and shape technology by leveraging what you see around you, like these chairs, by repurposing to really take something that was designed for one thing and use it for another, and actually building things that you know you see every day health workers need. Um, and then you sort of realize that somewhere someone is setting a vision for these things and we need to be a part of it as opposed to waiting for something to be delivered to us. Uh, it would just be a dream come true to see this room shaping uh, what technology comes next. Um, and I'm excited to continue that discussion with you all. Uh, thanks for having me back.